Hey guys, I'm live from my bed quarters. <laughs> my headquarters are my bed quarters. <laughs> live from the, my good old bed quarters. I'm doing, I'm doing this old school. For those of you that have been following my channel for a while know that uh, I used to do a lot of videos from my bed. And uh, typically, typically, if I was doing that, it was probably because something wasn't good. <laughs> it was probably not good. And I probably had something to report on that that uh, was, uh, was pretty crappy. So um, I just got done my sessions for today and I just got done group and um, I had some, I had an idea, uh, something I wanted to talk about that came up in group tonight and I was, uh, I was hoping to talk to you guys about that. Um, before I forget, um, I, I do take people from, for one-to-one -one coaching every day. Um, people are asking me right now what the heck is going on with my website we don't know. My web developer is on top of it. We don't know what is going on. And um, they think that they fixed the problem, the server. And uh, I don't understand any of this stuff. So thank God for my web developer to help me with that stuff. Um, it should be up and running within 48 hours. If not, we're going to move it to another server. Um, also, a lot of you are telling me that you... I know because this goes on for me too. That you are, um, you're not getting the notifications when I go live. I don't know why this goes on and why some people, like why I get notifications. I've clicked the bell for a lot of channels and I'll get like two days later, I'll get a message that the video is up and it was a live video from like two, three days ago. I don't know why it's doing this and why some of you get the, the notifications and others aren't. So I apologize the most I can do from my end is um, I can uh, get on the, get on the uh, chat because that's you know you can't you can't actually get on the phone with anybody at YouTube but you can chat with somebody and uh, see what they can answer for me about that and why that is happening for you and I'm sorry I don't understand some of these issues with YouTube and why it's set up this way and why people are having issues so I apologize. Um, so tonight I want to talk to you guys about one thing you you need to know and it needs to be clear to you uh, of what the narcissist is going to do in your life and in in possibly your friends and family's life. Okay, um, the narcissist has sat back and um, um, hi guys, thanks for being on with me late tonight. I'm happy to have you on with me. Yeah, I um, I don't know what's going on with the YouTube stuff, guys. I, I'm really sorry. I'm gonna try to figure it out. But so the so the narcissist in getting back to this this boundaries and 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 how they're going to push it to the extreme. Well, they're sitting back, guys, and they're studying you, and they're figuring you out. They're also figuring out your family members and your friends, because what they like to do and one of their favorite things to do. Um, that could be it, Anne Marie. That could be what's going on there. I think I'm not sure, but because they said it wasn't that. Um, sorry, I'm I am trying to interact with you guys, but uh, let me get back to um the uh what I'm talking about here. Yeah, so they're sitting back and they're observing you, and one of their favorite things to do is push buttons and boundaries and figure out what makes people uncomfortable. Okay, they they love to do this. So they're figuring out your biggest fears. They're figuring out what you worry about, what you care about, what's important to you, where your boundaries are, what you tolerate and don't tolerate. And they're keeping note of all this, guys, because the really malignant ones are going to go back on that and say, okay, well, she doesn't like this. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Watch this. And they sit back and they watch your reaction because now they know, all right? And this is why it's very important when you meet new people in your life, and I don't care if it's friendships or if it's relationships that you're getting involved with somebody new, that you do not disclose things about you until you have figured out who this person is and whether or not they're worthy of coming on your ship and who needs to get off the ship. 
you know? Um, so it's very important that while you're getting to know people, and that's, excuse me, that's why we do get to know people. We get to know people. We, we take our time to get to figure out who we're dealing with, what they're all about. And um, thank you, Rocky. I'll just go with the what I can read. I don't have my glasses. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever remember. Um, oh, my God. What were the names of those guys? I, this shows my age. Um, they used to do these, like, prank calls, and they would call people. Was it the Jerky Boys? Was that what the name of them was? <laughs> I'm showing my age. <laughs> um, anyway, that was one of the things they used to say. I need to get all my glasses so I can see. Um, you are in St. Petersburg, Florida. Well, gee, I wish that um, I had seen that ahead of time. It was really hard for me to get everybody together. I was like kind of on a tight schedule of making sure... I saw everybody and did all the things I was supposed to do on my, you know, vacation. But, um, please guys, um, please stay tuned with me because I am trying to put together some retreats as we speak. And I know that a lot of you are interested in, in doing like a, a long weekend getaway, um, uh, as travel is starting to open up more with this, um, with this pandemic here. So, yeah, I, I just want you guys to know that they're going to take it to extremes. This is what they do. Um, if your parents don't like swearing and you've told them that ahead of time, hey, look, you know, my, my parents don't like it when you swear. And it's actually anybody, de anybody that's decent isn't going to go on a first time, you know, get to know your parents and be, be F-bombing left and right. But obviously an indecent, Narcobot will be doing these things and then some. Uh, they'll be swearing and they'll they'll know that your father gets really annoyed and really upset by it and and they'll just, oops, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. And they'll just keep doing it. Um, if uh, you know they'll, they'll be they'll be taking out sex jokes in front of your family members just to make everyone turn red and be like, what the heck? They don't care that they are the ones that look like the ignorant, you know, robot. They don't care about any of that. What they care about is getting a reaction from you. They care about making you uncomfortable. They care about the fact that it's pushed your boundaries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Linda, uh, one of my clients, uh, her name is Kathy, uses uses that term all the time, narco bot, and I think it's brilliant. <laughs> so I've I've taken it on. I say I watch my I catch myself saying it all week now. Narco bots. Um <laughs> it's brilliant. Good right, you have to stand your ground. You have to with these people. You can't allow it and tolerate it. And let me tell you something else. OK, I'm working now. It's it's interesting um, how you work with somebody f for a certain thing in their life. And the next thing you know, you're coaching them on other aspects of their life. And and so for those of you that may not know that, um, if you do go to my website, you'll see that I have an extensive background of what I've done for work. And so I utilize those skills in coaching and helping people. So I don't only coach on narcissistic abuse. Another thing I don't think I make enough mention of, and I need to start doing that, is that, um, you know, I'd say 50% of my business are clients of mine that are having a bad day and need to get in that day because and that's what I've made my services uh, all about because I know how this stuff works. Something triggers you, and next thing you know, uh, you're having a really bad day and you need to talk to someone. So that's what I'm doing for a lot. It's like 50-50. 50% of the people I'm working with are scheduled in my schedule every week. And they either want to meet with me earlier because they're having a bad day or something is going on. Or um, it's just other people. So you guys should know that. If you're having a bad day, you should reach out to me. You should email me. Um, all of my information is in the drop-down menu. My email address is traceface_it at gmail.com. I always try to make mention of that in every video. So getting back to this boundary pushing, uh, 
Yeah. It runs pretty deep, too. It, it runs deep with the sex, okay? You guys have ever been with a malignant narcissist. You know that they can't just have sex. They don't just make love to you. Now, they might have moments where they're they're pretending or they're they're making off that they're making love to you because they know this is getting into your psyche. This is getting into your mind. This is getting getting you to be able to let your guard down and let them do and let them push the sex to to the limits. They're going to they have to pervert it. That's the evil, evil demons inside of them from watching God knows what they watch on the internet. And I, I, you know how I feel about that stuff. I think it gets worse and worse and worse. And I believe pornography is laced with evil and is laced with spirits that will invade your home after you watch this, these, these, these kinds of uh, sadistic acts. And they just keep increasing it because now they're getting desensitized to what they're watching. And then they, they're increasing the level of, of indecency and perversion. They have to pervert sex. It's what they do. They're going to push your boundaries. So watch out for this kind of stuff, guys. Okay. You might think like, oh, you know, this person maybe just didn't know. Maybe they just were raised this way and they didn't know, um, you know, about. Um... I used to have this friend back when I was in my 20s. Cheapest, cheapest uh, moocher user. Uh, she would make off. You know, I lived with her for a few years. She was a roommate of mine. And she'd make off that, um, she just didn't, she just forgot to clean. And she would do this thing where she would, you know, I I ended up making like a, a chart so that we understood who was in charge of what every week. Because I wasn't about to be cleaning the bathroom after her, her stank rear end every week. All right. I won't even get into that. And, you know, and I, when I'd say like, you know, um, we need to trade off on this cause it's unfair. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And it would be the day to do the chores. You know, we do it on like a Saturday cause we're both working 40 hours a week and she'd be overdoing purposely. And it took me a while to figure her out. She'd purposely be doing things that didn't need to be done. Like polishing the top of the microwave <laughs> or, you know, dusting the chairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. She, she can conveniently just, no, it was, it was, it was a, it was a big, this to me is what it was in her own, in her own passive aggressive way. It was, you know, uh, I'll do what I want when I want, how I want. Because that's what I was raised. And I'll tell you, these people did not, were not taught accountability and consequences, most likely in their family. They, they never were punished. So, you know, they don't understand that, you know, there's such a thing as getting your rear end beat <laughs> for mouthing off. I, I mean, I think half these, half these narcs need their rear ends beat, <laughs> you know, they, 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 but they, ne see, they never got the punishment as, kids and you know uh they they think they can get away with anything and everything and you'll notice you know if they were to mouth off to someone you know I, I say this you know theoretically about getting beat because we you know I don't I don't mean it uh that this is what you should do um <laughs> please don't take that literally um if they were to mouth off to somebody at a bar or whatever and uh, most likely, you know, they're probably drunk while they're doing this uh, or, you know, they think that they know there's no consequences and somebody would actually give it to them what, what they got coming, you know, because they were in this person's face and thinking the person wasn't going to do anything. And the person was flat out, you know, you know, flatlined them. They'd be the first person, you know, even if they just had a, I don't know, a bloody nose 
okay, or a black guy, they'd be the first person to sue you and take you to court. They are, they, they are just, they are just. So even getting their rear ends uh, handed to them wouldn't even, wouldn't even straighten them out. Okay, does no good. None of it does any good because it's, it's always somebody else's fault. Okay, it's always somebody else's fault in their world. You know, that's how, that's how it works for them. Uh, and it's how, it's how they, they, they know to get away with things. But what I'm trying to get you guys to understand, and if you're listening to me tonight and you do have kids, please listen to what I'm telling you. Cause what I was going to say earlier is I'm working now with a lot of different dynamics of parents and their, their children. Uh, I, I, you know, I, uh, I wasn't blessed to have any of my own at this point in my life. But I do know a thing or two about boundaries and consequences. And let me tell you something. If you do not enforce this kind of thing in your home, your child is going to grow up believing that it's their world and their way or the highway. And it is completely the wrong thing. You've got to, when they're, when they're misbehaving, You've got to hit them where it hurts. You've got to take away something that they love doing, which is, as we all know, the tablet, the cell phone. You take that away from them. No if, and, or buts about it. You don't have to yell. You don't have to scream. You tell them, listen, I told you that if you did this one more time, this was going to be the consequence, and you chose to do it anyway. So, you know, and you let them take a fit. You let them call you every name in the book. Or you don't. Now the next boundary is, listen, I told you if you ever call me those names again, there was, now you're not going to have your friends over for two months. And you're not going to your friend's house for two months. It's got to be this way, guys, because they're going to grow up believing that, you know, whatever they want to do and get away with is okay. And you got you to change this. You got to fix this within the dynamics of your home. They have to see you as a parent. You're the parent. They're the child. And I'm working with a lot of people right now that are having difficulty. And I know how difficult it is because a lot of times, nine times out of 10, you got a partner that you've, you've gotten away from. That's a narc and your child is picked up on, on these traits and you're scared. You're scared. And so a lot of you, uh, feel like you don't want to be as harsh with them because they're already getting all kinds of whatever from the narcissist. But let me tell you, your your child will thank you down the line. They will be thanking you for, for instilling boundaries, for showing boundaries, for showing respect, teaching them respect, che- teaching them consequences, maturity, all those things that, as we know, narcissists don't have. They're little toddlers themselves. You're basically dealing with the toddler. What do toddlers do? They're pushing boundaries. They want to see what they can get away with. They want to know. They're, they're always testing you to see. Oh, if I cry, what will mommy do? I know I'm going to cry at, you know, the, the drop of a hat. And uh, <laughs> um, so this is how you're going to teach your kids. You got to teach, you got to teach, you know, you got to learn boundaries. And uh, the narcissist doesn't have any. And as they get older, they're going to see that in their in their perhaps narc parent that you no longer have anything to do with the your uh, your ex partner there, or uh, maybe it's a uh, maybe it's your parents that are teaching you know you, the grandparents are teaching the kids these these bad ways. But um, they're gonna they're gonna grow up to respect and they will I don't know if you guys have watched if you're watching this video for the first time I do have a video where I talk about how I believe a narcissist is made and uh, I do believe that every single person comes into early adulthood and comes to a crossroads where they can literally say I saw this happen to me as a kid it was dysfunctional it was toxic and I do not want to be these things and and then realize maybe these were the good things about my parents and what they taught me. I take that with me, but I do not carry out this operation that was that was that that I watched growing up. So 
I hope you guys keep this information in mind that the narcissist, you can tell them. As a matter of fact, if you do tell them a narcissist what your boundaries are and they're very malignant and they are at the, the top of the spectrum of, of being evil, wow, you've just given them the tick, the key and the ticket in their mind to your demise, which to them is success. To starve a person of their human rights, to uh, belittle a person, to humiliate them, to watch them scramble, watch them try to put together pieces of a puzzle. And the, the, the most malignant ones, they especially love to do this to good people. They love it. Makes them feel power and control to be evil little monsters going around trying to destroy good people. That's my message for everybody tonight. I am Trace Face, and as we know, it's always time to face the truth together.